speed, velocity, vectors, and scalars. Speed is your distance traveled in one second. Velocity, on the other hand, is the displacement traveled in one second. It's not necessarily one second, it's per unit time. So it could be the distance traveled over an hour or some other period of time. But our common unit for both speed and distance is going to be meters per second. This is different than what we see in uh, the real world. Most commonly in the real world, these things are written in kilometers per hour. Um, and so we'll have to work back and forth between those two things and um, recognize that if we're going to combine speed or velocity with, um, with anything else, we need to make sure that it's in meters per second. So speed is given the symbol V which is your distance over time. V is an odd choice here for speed, obviously, but if we recognize it, that we're keeping it consistent with velocity, which is displacement per unit time, then you can see why we've used the letter V. Uh, the arrows in the velocity uh, formula recognize that both velocity and displacement are vectors. And just as a quick reminder here, a vector is a measurement with size and direction. Where a scalar is just the size. It doesn't pay attention to what direction it's going in. So speed is your how far you've gone and or how fast your how fast your position is changing in terms of your total path length and velocity is sort of a more overall how far you are from where you started divided by the unit time or how fast your overall position has changed directions matter for velocity so let's look at a simple example here that should illustrate the difference between the two things a delivery truck travels 100 kilometers west before realizing it's gone too far and returns 25 kilometers east. The entire trip takes 90 minutes. Determine the average speed and velocity of the truck. Um, I have a delta D1 here, or a displacement of 100 kilometers west, and a secondary displacement of 25 kilometers east and the trip takes 90 minutes. I could convert those kilometers to meters in that time to seconds and that would be acceptable. Actually it would probably be, um, well it might be what you need to do if you're doing other calculations further with this. but. I'm going to recognize that in one hour there are 60 minutes. I'm going to convert that 90 minutes into hours. And then I'll get answers in kilometers per hour, which are a pretty standard unit for used for something like a delivery truck. So let's look at um, this then. The speed for the delivery truck. Oh, I don't know what happened up there. Um, the speed for the delivery truck is equal to the distance over time and the velocity is equal to the displacement over time. And in these cases we want the total of each. So I have to go back here for a second and calculate it, those totals. The total displacement is going to be displacement 1 plus displacement 2. In this case uh, 100 kilometers west plus 25 kilometers east. I need to be careful here. I don't have a common positive direction right now. Again, I'm th another example where it might be easier to make west positive, but I just stick with my standard and make my east positive. Negative, that means that this 100 kilometers west becomes negative 100 kilometers east 
and this is still 25 kilometers east for a total of negative 75 kilometers east. Alternatively, if I want my total displace or um, distance, it's easier than that because I'm looking at my individual distances and everybody's a scalar, which means there's no directions, which means I'm going 100 kilometers plus 25 kilometers for a total of 125 kilometers. Now we can go back up to our equations here. Oh, get rid of that stuff that's from previous attempt at this video. I'm going to erase this equation. I'm going to move it over so that I have a little bit more space for it. I'm going to work with the speed first. Or, sorry, the velocity first. The velocity is the displacement divided by time. So that would be negative uh, 75 kilometers east in 1.5 hours, which works out to 50 kilometers per hour, negative east. And what that really means is 50 kilometers per hour west. Alternatively, I can do the same thing for speed. Speed is equal to my distance per unit time. And in this case, my total distance, if I look down here, was 125 kilometers. In that same 1.5 hours, that works out to 83.3 kilometers per hour. No direction here, obviously ignoring direction. Now it's interesting, we, when we compare these two numbers, they are, um, their meaningfulness is a little bit, is a little bit interesting. This 83.3 kilometers per hour is probably a little bit more meaningful in that this is gonna give you an idea of how fast the car is actually going. It's uh, more representative, probably, of the. Uh, it's more representative of the actual motion, where this, this is sort of an average velocity for the whole trip. It tells it tells you the net effect, but it's a little bit. It's not as meaningful as it could be because, it, the change in direction washes out how fast the car was actually going. It's correct from a uh, from a definition standpoint, but it might not be um, it might not be the most sort of meaningful in terms of making a real world connection. In a follow up video to this, we'll be looking at converting between kilometers per hour to meters per second, as well as discussing this idea of average versus instantaneous and speed versus velocity a little bit further.